So this is, proposal that's, this is the proposal that's on the agenda as wavy dot, uh, the actual concrete syntax uh, that, that I'll be showing is the tilde followed by the dot. Um, unfortunately, a Twitter poll uh, was conducted uh, and in which tilde dot was the uh, winning term. But in anticipation of uh, Yehuda's question, I want to say that the actual topic to be proposed for stage one, that I'm proposing for stage one, is to investigate not this particular concrete syntax, or even necessarily adding syntax, but the, but the, um, the investigation that I want to go forward in stage one is pleasant notation for promise pipelining, basically pleasant notation for actually doing the things that the previous proposal uh, makes possible. Um, the previous proposal's APIs, uh, when used by themselves, are not yet pleasant notation. So whenever uh, we start down this route, uh, syntax is always very, very expensive. I've always been one of the harshest critics against adding new syntax to the language. Uh, so whenever um, syntax is proposed, one should make an aggressive search for what's the uh, best alternative to adding new syntax. Uh, and one thing that comes up a lot is why you know proxy. Um, so let's investigate the best that we can do with proxies. And let's motivate this with the following uh, three um, examples of something we could express with the wavy dot syntax and see how see what it would take to express it instead with proxies. So in the first one, uh, we're doing a uh, eventual get uh, uh, on B, where B represents a, a potentially remote object. Uh, in the second one, we're doing an eventual method call. Uh, and in the third one, uh, we're also doing the eventual method call, but we're doing it in a syntactic context where the result is ignored. So let's hypothesize a helper called R that uh, returns a proxy that we're, that, uh, so that we can then use the intuitive syntax uh, follow, following the proxy, just dot foo rather than wavy dot foo. Uh, now the problem is, since we want to support both eventual get and eventual call, we're left with a dilemma. What should um, uh, R of B dot foo return? Well, if it's an eventual get that we're actually interested in, then what it should return is a promise for the result of the eventual get. Uh, if what we're interested in, if um, proxies, however, cannot distinguish a method call from a get followed by a function call. Uh, Tom and I, just historical note, Tom and I tried several times to enhance the handler API to make it possible for proxies to distinguish those cases, uh, but none of those proposals happened, and it's fundamentally impossible for a proxy to distinguish those cases. Um, so if the uh, R of B dot foo is, is the first part of a method call that we want to follow it with the open paren argument syntax, then what it needs to return is either a function or a function proxy. And there's no possible value which is both a genuine promise uh, and a function or a function proxy. So we're left with the dilemma there. A way to solve the dilemma is that uh, have r of b dot foo return a handle promise and then just use the r wrapper again to turn that into a proxy out of for, uh, after which we can use normal notation. Uh, so then the, these proxies, the proxies returned by r, could always be function proxies so that they could always accept the possibility of being invoked with function call syntax, in which case the notation at the bottom would be um, uh, notation for an eventual method call uh, without introducing new syntax into the language. And what we're actually uh, doing at Agoric is we 
um, uh, uh, are using a different proxy helper that we call E, E for eventual, that is just an alternative to the line above. So you could imagine that you have multiple proxy helpers, uh, both R and E, where E just gives you the automated uh, method call syntax and R gives you the other cases. Uh, that would be a viable solution so far. But uh, then the other thing is that a proxy or, a, or its handler cannot detect whether the result will be ignored. Um, so uh, if the result is ignored, then you're doing a bunch of extra bookkeeping uh, to produce the result in the remote calling case that you didn't actually need, and it's expensive to, to do the unnecessary bookkeeping. I should also go back to the, to the double R case, that that one's also doing extra remote bookkeeping, because now you have to do the bookkeeping in the communications protocol to thread through the remote reference to the function that you're locally getting a, a, a function proxy for, um, uh, whereas the only thing you're using that remote function for is to uh, call it. So it would be good to have just sent over the entire remote call rather than doing the bookkeeping to receive the function. Uh, fortunately, the double R does not create an extra round trip given promise pipeline. This is actually a very nice example of why promise pipeline is important, is we're only paying for extra bookkeeping, we're not paying an extra round trip given promise pipeline. So at Agoric, uh, we're actually experimenting with the approach that, you're, that, that um, this R versus E is essentially showing of having multiple uh, proxy handlers, proxy helpers, um, uh, to distinguish not just from between eventual get and eventual call, but also distinguish the cases about are we ignoring the return result or not. Um, so with a whole menagerie of these things, and uh, Michael Fig also has a a uh, different way of providing them that gives us a kind of a fluent syntax, a left to right syntax rather than a uh, building up prefixes on the left syntax. Um, and all of these have various degrees of usability. They're not horrible, uh, but none of them are pleasant. Um, uh, and uh, the reason why I generalized the topic of this stage one proposal is that it's not necessarily the case that we've completely explored the possibilities of proxy helpers. Um, so I propose that this proposal going forward to stage one continue to include that exploration as inbounds. But uh, the, the focus of, of this proposal uh, is still uh, what it would take to be a pleasant notation, uh, assuming that we, that we um, give ourselves the option to add syntax. And the concrete syntax we're proposing is wavy dot. Again, the idea is that to read this as adjective dot in the same way the question mark dot can be thought of as adjective dot. It's like dot in many ways, but different in a particular way. Um, and uh, also the, the notion of reading both of them as adjective dot uh, also suggests how they're combined, uh, which is uh, if each of them are understood as adjective dot, then it's not surprising if there's yet another token added to the language, which is either tilde question mark dot or dot question mark tilde, or uh, you know what I mean, uh, uh, dil, uh, question mark tilde dot or, or tilde question mark dot. Um, just adding both syntaxes together to combine the functionality. Uh, and uh, the, uh, what's on the right would be the meaning of these various productions uh, in the case where their uh, value is used. And in the case that, th that they've been just focusing on one example, the, um, uh, 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 the uh, method, the apply method case, uh, if they syntactically appear in a position where their uh, result value is obviously thrown away, such as an expression statement or if preceded by a void or if the, or if the um, uh, left operand of a comma operator 
then uh, the it would correspond to the internal method with the send only form to avoid the extra bookkeeping. So the one piece of extra syntax allows us to distinguish all these cases without having to, re to remember a menagerie of proxy helpers. And this would be uh, essentially the abstract syntax uh, that we're talking about. And this would be the uh, concrete syntax um, that um, uh, is, I intended to have this correspond rather literally to the, con to the concrete syntax for the optional chaining proposal, question mark dot. Uh, if there's a discrepancy between what's here and question mark dot, that discrepancy should probably be fixed. Um, uh, but the intention is that uh, these, these things are all the same kind of intuitive extension of the meaning of dot and the syntactic uh, placement of dot. Um, and like question, mark dot, like question mark dot, they also apply to square bracket uh, lookup, and they apply to function call, and they apply to method call. And that's it. And I'll take questions. Oh, I will stop recording and then take questions. Hold on.